Hey friends, you found my quick and simple guide on the care of morning geckos. I'm going to start with some quick facts about these animals, but after that I'll get into some information on specific needs and housing. You'll also find a link in the description of this video that will take you to a care guide which I've published on my website. All the information here can be found there in greater detail. In comparison to other lizards, morning geckos are quite small. At fully grown they'll top out at between 3 to 4 inches in length. In the wild, these animals can be found in the tropical and coastal areas surrounding the Indian and Pacific Ocean. They are a food source for many animals, and due to these predators, their lifespan in the wild is relatively short, with an average of 5 years. However, in captivity with proper care, they can live up to 10 years. Because of their small size, morning geckos don't require a lot of space. Generally, a 10 to 20 gallon tank will be sufficient for a few adults, but as your colony begins to grow, you'll probably want to upgrade to something larger. These are also arboreal animals, which means that they like to climb, so something with a little more height than floor space is generally preferable. As I'll get into a little bit later, morning geckos are actually territorial animals, so it is good to provide them with multiple hiding spaces. Having these multiple hides will give your geckos the ability to claim territory as their own, but it also gives them somewhere to retreat to if fighting does break out. These animals also do exceptionally well in a bioactive setup, so the tank that I'm showing here is a combination of both natural and artificial plants. In this video I won't get into the specifics of how to set up a bioactive terrarium, because I do plan on doing a tutorial video on this in the future. The one thing I will say though, is that one of the most crucial components of any good bioactive terrarium is having a drainage layer. Not only does this keep your soil from becoming stagnant, but it also helps maintain a high humidity within the tank. This is achieved by placing your substrate on top of a screen mesh, which is then placed on some sort of medium, which is loosely packed. Because of their light weight, these clay balls are very popular for this purpose, but I have also used stones or pebbles in the past. I'll now discuss the diet and feeding of your morning geckos. Morning geckos are insectivores, and they'll benefit from a well-balanced diet. But as a staple food, I generally feed them rapashi. Rapashi comes in a variety of flavors and provides a well-balanced diet for your geckos. This can easily be purchased in most pet shops. If you're planning to keep your geckos in a bioactive terrarium, it's quite likely you'll be using UV lighting. If this is the case, you want to purchase rapashi that does not have additional vitamin D supplementation. Preparing rapashi for consumption by your geckos is incredibly easy. All you'll need to do is make sure that it's finely ground and add treated water to it. This will make a paste-like solution, which your geckos will love. I like to put my gecko's feeding dish somewhere in the center of the tank. This is a good communal spot, which will mean they'll all have access to it, and it'll also allow me to observe them while they're eating. It won't take long for your geckos to find this food. You'll probably observe them eating it within minutes. Though morning geckos can technically survive on rapashi alone, I do like to vary their diet with insects. Crickets are always a great option, they're readily available, and these will help to stimulate your pet's natural instincts. You'll want to make sure that any crickets or insects you're providing to your morning geckos are appropriately sized for them. Fully grown large crickets would simply be too big for the smaller geckos to eat. For my freshly hatched morning geckos, I'll often supply fruit flies. Fruit fly colonies can be found at most reptile shops. They're not overly expensive, and if kept correctly, they'll replenish themselves over and over again. Your mature morning geckos may eat these as well, but they're obviously not quite the meal that a cricket is, so they'd have to eat quite a few of them to get any nutrition. I don't supply my geckos with a watering dish, as they'll get water from the rapashi, but I also do spray their tank every day. Morning geckos need a high humidity level, and you should aim for around 70 to 90% humidity. You'll likely find that when you do actually see your morning geckos drinking water, it's from the runoff of this spray. In their natural environment, they would drink the water that pools on leaves, so this is perfectly normal for them. As with all my reptiles and amphibians, I also use treated water for this process. Reptile water conditioner can be found in most pet shops, and it helps to remove any dangerous chemicals that might be found in tap water. Provided you show your geckos the love they need, feed them regularly, and keep their environmental conditions in check, you'll soon have a thriving colony on your hands. I will now speak to the ease of breeding morning geckos. 
If you have even a passing interest in this animal, you're probably already likely aware that this is incredibly easy to do. They can reproduce asexually, which means they have the amazing ability to lay fertilized eggs without any male intervention. What's particularly fascinating about this process is that 100% of the genetics in these babies will be coming from the mother. This essentially means that these babies are clones. Really, the only requirement for breeding morning geckos is to own them. That and keeping their environmental conditions correct. As long as you do this, you'll find a thriving colony in no time. As the number of morning geckos in your colony begins to increase, the growth will soon become exponential. As more and more of them are hatched, more and more eggs will appear. Generally, your morning geckos will lay their eggs in a place where they feel secure. This could be the hollow of a cork bark, or maybe a dark corner within your terrarium. Don't be alarmed if you don't see any eggs. This was your morning gecko's intention. They don't really want you to find them, but once they do find a secure spot, they'll tend to use this over and over again. I'd now like to give a few words of caution, as well as some advice regarding things I wish I had known before I started keeping these animals. As mentioned previously in this video, these animals can actually be territorial. It's funny to think that something would get into a dispute with an exact clone of itself, but this kind of reminds me of that age-old question, if you met yourself, would you like yourself? The babies that I'm now showing have had their tails severed by adult morning geckos during territorial disputes. This isn't really a huge deal, as these tails will regrow, but they're obviously not going to be as aesthetically pleasing as before, and it is a little bit alarming to see. There are two solutions to this problem. The first would be to increase the size of your colony's terrarium, giving them more space to spread out and claim their own territory. Or two, you can separate the babies when they're born. This is a bit of work though, and it's often hard to find them. At birth, morning geckos are very tiny. They're often hard to see, and they're actually quite fast and difficult to catch. Which leads me into my next point. Morning geckos are notorious for their ability to escape, particularly when young, they can fit through tiny, tiny openings inside their enclosure that you would not think possible. When setting up their terrarium, it's very important that you plug any possible route of escape. Even with a little bit of forethought about this, it's quite likely that you're going to have some escape. You're going to have to see for yourself just how small they are when they're born, and you're going to have to learn from this. It's extremely typical, even for people with experience keeping these animals, myself included, to have the odd one running around your house. This is just something that can't be avoided. Once they get out, they're very hard to catch, so be prepared for lizards on the loose inside your home. Morning geckos really are amazing animals. They're easy to take care of, and they make a good introductory lizard for people wanting to get into reptile keeping. The unique way in which they breed makes them fascinating to observe, but this also means that you need to give consideration to how many of these animals you're willing to take care of. As with any pet, you want to do your research and make sure that you're 100% in on the commitment that is required to take care of them. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope this has at least given you a starting point and some idea of what to expect when keeping morning geckos.